Hey everyone, it's Kathy Koliakovo with PeppertMarketing.com and the host of Marketing Your Private Practice with Kathy C, a podcast that you'll find on your favorite podcast app, player app anywhere. So this week on the podcast episode, we were talking about formatting blogs and newsletters differently. And part of the conversation got to talking about when you put a subtitle on your blog post about formatting it with an H2 tag. So we talked a little and I shared what H2 tags are and the kind of things that you want to do with them and how you use them. They are something that is unique to your uh, blog content only, okay? You don't use them typically in a newsletter content. You definitely use them on your blog content though. So the thing about using them is some people aren't always necessarily sure how to do it. So I wanted to show you a little more how to go in and use an H2 tag when it comes to your marketing content, because it is key to making sure that you are formatting the blog the best way possible so that more people read it, they go through, consume the content. Uh, H tags are something that will help people skim along a little bit and read the content a little easier when it's online. And the whole goal is to get them just really to take in the message that you've taken the time to put in there. So when we talk about H tags, they are something to do with the coding and the design and the back end of your website system. But most websites that people I run into use, uh, whether it's a WordPress one like I use or Squarespace or Wix, they all have these options now to change some of the format of your text that you put on your pages or your blog posts by putting those kinds of formatting tags on them. So there are six tags that you find that are called H tags and they go H1 through H6. And essentially what happens is however your site is set up, so it may be a conversation you have to have with your web manager if you don't like the setup or you want to change it, because you can, but however it's set up, your H tags may make your font show in a different size, a different color, maybe bold, maybe italics, depends on what it is, and even different fonts. So that's what it does in its job that is on your website. Part of its role to use it is formatting so people can read content easier. Part of the role of H tags is actually for the search engines to recognize what the content is all about on your web pages or your blog posts. So using them is key to helping both parties, visitors and the search engines get the message you're trying to put out there. So H1 tags are almost always the title tag. They're either the title of your page or the title of your blog post. You typically don't want to compete with that. So you don't want any other H1 tags on your pages. But when it comes to the other content, you can use H2 tags and H3, H4 even more if you want to. And because the setup will show those text in those tags at different sizes, colors, or fonts, it's a great way to use formatting to break up the look and the layout of the content you have and make it easier for people to skim. So when we talk about H2, I'm always talking and what I teach the students in my programs is to use H2 tags for specifically the subtitle of blog posts. And so when we talk about those, when we look at those, and I'm going to share my screen here um, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. But when we're talking about H2 tags in particular, we're looking at these subtitles, which should be keyword rich. And as I shared in the podcast um, episode 55 that came out on August 1st of 2023, you'll understand a little bit more about using them in the overall aspect of formatting a blog post with the seven different elements that you wanna think about when you're formatting things. But when it comes to a blog in particular, I'm going to show you on my blog and I'm going to just hit my little spotlight button so you can see where I'm going here. Um, I want to show you exactly what it looks like and how you do it. So this is the back end of my website and this is on a blog post. So this is the title here. So when we look at that and if I took a preview look at this, you're going to see that in my titles, I've got this script font, okay? The next line that we have here, and you can see this is the formatting menu bar. So when I go up here 
it doesn't say where it's at. When I click in just text, you'll see it switch to paragraph. When I click on this line here that's a little bigger, you can see that it's in the heading two or H2 tag. So it is putting that information in that tag looking in a different way. So when we look at the preview, you can see that in this case, the font is black, but it's a larger size font, okay? And it's a different font than the title font. So this is part of what you can do with the formatting that you put to your content. And it can make things stand out a little different. This one here, I can tell by the size, it's an H3 tag. This one is just bold content. Um, this one, it's probably, if I look, and I'll show you here in a second, it's probably also an H2 tag. So if I go over here, uh, it's an H3, heading three. And so it just makes it stand out a little more, but I also italicized it to do that as well. So you can see all the information here. It's things are standing out. And the idea of using these tags is to help break up what you've got there so that people can read it easier. So the idea is if someone were to look at this and they were to be skim reading it, you know, one thing business and practice owners forget with their marketing content and material. Okay. You know, and then you've got another highlight here. You've got an image here. A job of your marketing content is to build trust. You need to be with your marketing, always showing your face or who you are, how to reach you. So some of these messages are standing out because they're in different things. Here's why it's important. If someone scrolls to this, they're probably going to read what comes right after it. Um, if we've got a list of bullet points here, if they don't know the content from is from you, then we've got like some other information here. I've got another one that's highlighted here. If you're missing from your marketing, people who see it, read it, and listen to it won't know who you are. So this is an important part of the message. So you use formatting like this to make things stand out. But with a subtitle, you want a keyword-rich subtitle. You want it short and simple. Try to keep it you know, just to one sentence, a short sentence, not one that uses a lot of commas, okay? And have it show up as easy as you can. So when you type it into your system, all you literally do is highlight it all, oh, my mouse failed there, highlight it all and hit the heading too. If I changed it back to a paragraph, it would look just like this, but I want it to stay as a heading two tag because it's the subtitle. It's the first line in the blog post and I want that formatted with the H2 tag. So that is how you go in and change some of the formatting and understanding a little bit more about what these H tags are and the H2 in particular. I don't typically put other H2s on the page. I like to keep it as the only one there. And if I want to stand other things out, that's when I'll turn them into an H3 one. Sometimes at the end, I will take the call to action. And you can see I've got that in a heading four, an H4 tag here. I want it to stand out a little more so that, again, if people are skimming and they come down near the bottom, boom, that content is in a little bigger format and size. So it stands out a bit more. So that is what I wanted to share with you on H2 tags and how you can use it in formatting your blogs in particular, and how you would go about using it. If you have a Squarespace site or a Wix site, it's usually the same action to make that happen. Create your subtitle, make it keyword rich, make it sort of support the title message, and then give people that added information that they'll understand if they were to keep on reading the article, because that's the goal of your subtitle and your title, is to entice people enough to read the content. All you literally do is when you've settled on what's going to be your subtitle, highlight those words on the text, put them into the H2 tag and hit save and you're all set. If you have any other questions about formatting your blogs and understanding a little more about how to format them differently when they're on your newsletter, when you take the article, put it in your newsletter, and then you take the same article because you're saving time with your marketing and you put it on your blog. If you have questions about that, definitely check out episode 55 of the podcast, because that one has some good information on seven different ways that you want to format your blogs and your newsletters differently to get the best bang for your marketing bucks. And that's what I want to do is help you get returns and get your marketing working. So be sure to check out that episode. I'll have a link below where you find this video. Look at it, understand it. 
Make a list of those seven things that you want to format differently from your article on your blog and the article when you put it in your newsletter. And that way you'll improve your marketing, reach more people and get out there trying to connect with the people you know you can have an impact on their lives. Enjoy this lesson and I will see you next time.